Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to answer a question from ASDFJK1227 who asks, can you do a resume video where you talk about every game and project you did and then a couple, uh, two short versions of interesting events or something so we can get a better understanding of your experiences in one spot, like 67, 60 seconds per project or company maximum to get a high level. You want me to talk about myself? Okay. See how you had to twist my arm? All right. I haven't got pictures to show. So let's start. I started in the game industry in 1981 at a company called Cybron. Well, it was originally called Pegasus Software, but they had to change because someone else had their name. I got offered the job when I was 15, but in Virginia, you can't work office jobs until you're 16. So on my 16th birthday, I got my driver's license and my first job. The, uh, Cybron were making games on cable set-top boxes. You played them with a remote. They were offered from a very particular cable company in it's either Reston or Herndon, Virginia. They needed art tools. I knew the Atari 800 really well, so I started working there as a toolmaker for artists on the Atari 800 in BASIC. I left for college, I went to U University of Virginia in 1983, but I kept coming back to Cybron during the summer. I also, by that time I had learned Pascal and C, and there was a really good uh, C compiler that came out for the PC. So one summer I came back and found out they had started making a bridge card game for Electronic Arts that was called Grand Slam Bridge. It was all being coded in C. I actually knew C better than the lead programmer, so we went through a lot of things together where I explained how to do things in C. It, that game came out in 1986. It scored really well, it still scored well. Ironically, I still don't know how to play bridge. All the code I did on it was I converted flowcharts from the designer on how to bid on bridge hands and play them into code. In 1987, I left Virginia and moved to California to go to grad school at UCI, University of California, Irvine. I was there for a little over four years. I got my master's, I was on the PhD program, and I bailed. Ironic, uh, a little ironic side note, both my PhD advisor, my colleagues, other professors, my friends, and my family members, except for one, all said I was making a huge mistake and I was throwing away a great degree to go make video games. That one person who went, yeah, that sounds like you, my mom, she was awesome. Anyway, I started at Interplay in 1991, so by then I'd been in the industry for 10 years. I was a contractor at first for Bard's Tale Construction Set. We made that game in just over 14 weeks. Crazy. That was in the fall of 91. They brought me on as a full-time employee beginning of the next year, so January of 92 and put me on Rags to Riches, which was a business simulation game. I really wanted to work on Lord of the Rings, which I loved Lord of the Rings. I reread that book every few years. And the programmer on Lord of the Rings had a bachelor's degree in economics and he wanted to do Rags to Riches, but they wouldn't let us switch. So I did Rags to Riches and it came out in 93. At that point I started floating around and helping other projects. I did some stuff on Star Trek 25th Anniversary. I did some stuff on Stonekeep. The, they had me making installers for all the other games because back then you had to make your own installer. I noticed that there was a pattern to it. So I made an installer installer where you could literally type in like, here's the name of the game. Here's how many discs it's on, whether it's floppy disks, you know, five and a quarter, three and a half, whether it's on a CD. You could type all that information in and it would just generate an installer for you. So I spent my free time making engines and GURPS tools, both of which I've shown here 
on the on the channel. The I ended up making an operating system wrapper called Gnaw. Gnaw is not Windows. It was originally, ironically, it wrapped DOS. It wrapped things like uh, grabbing key, keyboard input, mouse input. Uh, it allowed access to a millisecond timer that you had to do assembly language to get to. It was it it handled um, blitting, which is writing out pixels to the screen in all the different graphics mode, including Super VGA, which was new. That was 640, 480, 256 colors, required something called bank switching that had to be done differently on a video card. It was a pain in, in the butt. So I wrapped it all into Gnaw and just started using it myself. Gnaw eventually was used in Starfleet Academy, Atomic Bomberman, Max. I won an award for it. Uh, while all this was going on, I was playing with one of the engines I made. I made an isometric engine and a 3D engine and a voxel engine. The isometric engine became Fallout. I have a whole bunch of videos about how that happened. That shipped in 1997. I was going to go work on something else, but I decided, um, along with my boss and my boss's boss, that maybe it would be better if I did Fallout 2. Started work on that for various reasons, and there's a whole video on that. I left Interplay. So I started my own company, something I never thought I'd do. Started it on April 1st. 1998, because of course I did. I started with Leonard and Jason. Leonard Borowski was the lead artist on Fallout, but he did a ton of design too. And Jason was the uh, technical artist, but he did a ton of design too. I was really excited about having a company. I got to bring my dog to work, but there was a lot of stuff about running a company, which I did a whole video about stuff about renting office space, buying furniture, handling HR, handling publishers. It was just a bunch of stuff I wasn't prepared for. Our first game was Arcanum, which was the idea behind that was let's take fantasy and move it into the industrial age. We had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, that shipped in 2001. At that point, we split into two. We didn't want all of our eggs in one basket. We had been approached by both Atari and Activision for making different games. So I started making Temple of Elemental Evil for Atari. Leonard and Jason started making Vampire Bloodlines for Activision. This is why I tell people I wasn't even involved in Bloodlines for the first almost two years, 20 months. I was doing Temple. So Temple shipped in 2003. I switched over to working on Bloodlines. Bloodlines was the first game that I coded in C++. Every game up until now had been coded in C. We were also doing it in the Source Engine, so there wasn't really a choice of mine. It was like, if you're gonna code in Source, you're gonna do C++. Source is the Valve engine that they made for Half-Life. Vampire, after a very arduous production, shipped in 2004 and it did not sell very well. Temple didn't review well, but had sold a little better. Arcanum had reviewed and sold better than both of them. We were having trouble getting a new contract on something we wanted. We ended up closing down Troika in February of 2005, although shutting down a company is a really complicated process, and I was working on it just from home, no income, until about September of 2005. Which brings me to my next company. I was offered a job in August of 2005 at Carbine. Carbine is a division of NCSoft, which is a very big company. Um, my interview process was interesting. I had a, a separate lunchtime interview every day of the week, Monday through Thursday, with different people. I had it with the, peop the, the guys who started Carbine, then with the programmers, then with just the producer who I knew. He was Eric DeMille, who was the producer on Fallout 2. And then finally, a lot of big wigs flew in from NCSoft, uh, Texas. Their Amer North American office was in Austin. And I got to meet Richard Garriott and we blah, blah, blah for, all, for 
so long that Eric finally had to tell us to stop talking. Uh, they did professional headshots of me, which is a uh, first time I'd ever had a professional headshot done. I'm wearing a ton of pancake makeup. They have my shirt clipped in the back. The woman who did my makeup was Tom Hanks, a professional makeup artist. I told her to take off 10 years. I think she did a good job. Carbine was where I was going to be able to make an MMO, which if you watched my stuff, you know I was really excited about making an MMO. I loved EverQuest to death, was playing WoW, was working with a lot of the people who made WoW. So it was a really exciting position. For the first three years, from 2005 to 2008, I was the programming director. We made an engine from scratch. I worked with some brilliant programmers. I worked with one programmer who I think is the best programmer and smartest man I've ever met in my life. <clears throat> and then the design was not very advanced after three years. NCSoft got upset. I was put in place as design director. I worked there from 2008 to 2011. The, we made a lot of progress. We got a lot of design locked down, but it was hard to get everybody on the same page. I have a video about that. I left Carbine in July of 2011. Wildstar shipped three years later in 2014. So that game was in development for nine years from 2005 to 2014. I thought it was a gorgeous looking game and a fun game to play. Unfortunately, it never found its niche. Meanwhile, I went over to Obsidian. I started in Obsidian in October of 2011. I was only supposed to be there for six months. It was a temporary position to help with the code on South Park, The Stick of Truth. By the way, this would be the first time I ever worked on a game that was going out on console. And I was super excited. It was in C++. It was going out on Xbox and PlayStation. The Xbox was fairly straightforward. It was very much like a PC. Uh, PlayStation's different. It's harder. I talk about that in one of my videos about the cell architecture of the PlayStation 3 was difficult to code for. South Park shipped in 2014. Even before it shipped, I was switched over to Pillars of Eternity, which had started, started its Kickstarter. Then I got switched back to South Park to help uh, debug and optimize, and then back onto Pillars to make that game. I mainly was a programmer. I did do some design stuff. All of it went through Josh Sawyer, who really good designer. Um, I think I did things like the monk, uh, the um, cipher, uh, the stronghold design, although that got a lot, a lot of mod modifications from Josh. This was my, also my first game on Unity. I already knew C Sharp, which was a lucky break because there was a lot to learn for Unity and I didn't want to have to pile up learning a new language on top of that. Pillars went out in 2015. I think even before it hit the, the market, many of us were switched over to Tyranny. Tyranny was a super fun game. It was what would happen in a Lord of the Rings style fantasy world if Sauron had won. So it was fun. It was dark. It, there was a lot of fun making it. I had already, I was again in Unity and we were using the same code we used for Pillars. So I was very comfortable with it. It was fun to work on. It was oddly relaxing to work on it. Uh, pure 100% programming not really involved in, in design on Tyranny at all. I actually started, after Tyranny shipped in 2016, I started on Pillars 2, Deadfire, but within about two to three months, that's when I got convinced to be a game director, which, which I told them I didn't want to do, switched over to The Outer Worlds, which was on Unreal, so got to learn a whole new engine. That was in C++. That took a little over three years to make. That shipped in 2019, late 2019 in uh, what, September, October. Started after that working on the DLCs. They had their own game directors. Carrie Patel did Peril and Gorgon. 
and Megan Stark did Murder on Eridanos. I worked more on Murder on Eridanos. Uh, I love, by the way, the humor on that one. Some of the, the like the discrimination analyzer, analyzer, the gun, that was an awesome weapon device conversation. While all that was going on, um, I think even before either of those shipped, I moved from Tustin, California, up to Seattle in May of 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, basically, my husband flew down, helped me finish packing out the house. We threw all of our furniture into one of those pods that gets moved independently from you. We jumped in a car with our Labrador Retriever and drove in one straight shot up the coast. It took more than 20 hours. A lot of places were closed. It was hard to find some place to stop for food. Got up here, was going to continue as an employee, had to get switched to a contractor because Obsidian was not set up for employees outside the state. So I switched to a contractor. Well, as a contractor, my contract did not preclude me from working other places. So while I started working on Outer Worlds 2 as a contractor, I picked up another project as a paid consultant that I'm not allowed to talk about. And there were several more that were going on and are still going on that I'm in the early stages of potentially moving on to them as a contractor. So that brings us up to 2023. And here I am. I call myself semi-retired. I've worked in the industry for 42 years and one month as of this video going out. So that covers everything from August 1981 to September of 2023. That's my entire career in a compressed nutshell. So I hope this answers the question. And, you know, I feel bad that you had to drag out of me talking about myself for 15 minutes. I hope I did a good job.